When someone passes you at your workplace and says, follow me, what do you do? Do you get up immediately? Do you reply, just a minute, I need to finish this? Are you someone who needs more information? Hey, what do I need to bring? My keys, my phone, my laptop? Uh, where are we going? And who are you? Or do you even not look up from your work? We are still very early in the Gospel of Mark, and Jesus, freshly baptized in the Jordan in Judea, returns to Galilee to tell the people of the good news that the kingdom of God has come near and that things are going to change significantly. When Jesus passes the shore of the Lake Gennesaret and sees the Fisher brothers, Simon and Andrew, working there, he calls out to them on the lake, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And on the spot, they leave everything and follow Jesus. The same happens with the brothers James and John, another pair of fishermen. I'm wondering how Jesus said the words. He probably shouted to Simon and Andrew as they were casting their nets, which only makes sense at a certain distance to the shore. But was it commanding? Was it inviting? Gentle? Was it pleading? In whatever way he said it, they followed. When someone passes you at your workplace and says, follow me, what do you do? You wouldn't follow, would you? We are too sensible to follow an unknown person into an unknown future. Leave everything behind would be too radical. And that is phrasing it kindly. But this story is in the Bible, and so we must work with it. And as we are humans trying to understand everything around us and how things came to pass, how they came to be, we want to make sense of it. And we tried that with this passage too. Some biblical scholars describe following the call as a miracle that God works. It's the inaccessible working of the Holy Spirit. Another scholar sees the oppressive economic system of the Galilean fishing industry at work. The fishing industry in Palestine was fully under the control of the Roman Empire. Caesar owned every lake and river, and fishermen had to join a syndicate to obtain a license. Most of their catches were exported to the urban elites, and the local communities were deprived of their reliable food source. Romans collected high taxes and tolls for selling fish. So now with this knowledge in the back of our heads, Simon's, Andrew's, James and John's willingness to leave their nets, their families, their communities behind, people that depended on them and their workforce daily, it just makes more sense. It is because of their economic hardship. What did they have to lose? Aside from their families, of course. When someone passes you and says, follow me, what do you do? You wouldn't follow, would you? Because you are in a different situation than Simon, Andrew, James, and John, right? You don't have their problem. But then, what if that call was God's call? Are we just too comfortable in our lives to be real followers of Jesus? Or can we be followers of Jesus in a comfortable way? In our Old Testament reading today, we hear the story about a reluctant follower, the prophet Jonah. Jonah runs away, tries to flee God's call, and gets swallowed, but at the same time saved by a whale sent by God. On dry land again, God extends a call a second time to Jonah. And this time Jonah goes, though reluctantly, and he goes to Nineveh. Just five words in Hebrew suffice, and the entire community, even the animals, immediately rouse into action. The king of Nineveh outshines Jonah, the people change their ways, and God extends mercy to the once sinful city. 
This mercy is extraordinary, not least because it's given to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, Israel's arch enemy, which likely accounts for some of Jonah's reluctance. Now, where do you see yourself on the spectrum between the four disciples and Jonah? The struggle we are facing is that we don't want to come across as zealous or arrogant or disrespectful or, God forbid, even missionary. Talking about our faith in public is not something we seek. Sure, maybe it comes up now and then. And if it comes up, you may feel the urge to clarify, I go to church, but I'm not that kind of Christian. I'm not an evangelical. With an eye on recent news from Germany about continued strengthening of right-wing parties and politics, I wonder, I'm very, I am very tolerant, but at what point do I become complicit? And I think the same can be said about a, the religious political development in the US. How can we be followers of Jesus in a way that is true to the message and the messenger? How can we be followers of Jesus and deserving of identifying as such? How do we know that we are called to act? Or have we already been called? Jesus comes to Galilee to preach the good news, the gospel, the message that the kingdom of God is near. And he invites people to repent and to believe in the good news. Is that so hard? Don't we believe that God's reality reaches into our lives, bringing about a different world? Don't we believe that death is not the end and that we therefore don't have to struggle with wondering about what tomorrow will hold, but that we are free to act in the here and now? Can we learn to fish for people in ways that are hospitable, loving, fruitful, and nourishing? Can we learn to preach repentance, turning around in the way Jesus preached it? Not as condemnation or cultural erasure, but as an invitation to community, to closeness, to living together and walking and working together toward a better reality in our here and now. God's call manifests in a thousand different ways. And we respond and thousands more, from courage to reluctance to hopping on the next ship out of town. But there's at least the one thread running through it all. God's calling is frequently surprising and unpredictable. Who is called? Not the supposedly brightest and best, but a half-hearted coward, Jonah, or the lowest ones on the social ladder, and what for? So God might save our supposed enemies, Nineveh. So the world might turn upside down. Or for no apparent reason at all, a follow me. Apart from companionship itself, calling and supporting each other as we go. So again, my question, when someone passes to you at your workplace, and says, follow me, what do you do? Amen.